Welcome to this <coughs> IOSH branch virtual meeting, one of many we've had. Um, good to see you all come in. Um, I am doing a joint session. I'm the co-host, but uh, Richard will be doing the presentation and more of that later. Um, just a reminder of a few things. <coughs> we start about now, our name to finish is about uh, 2.30. Um, and we have a security arrangement here that uh, after about a quarter of an hour, we lock, that lock out. And so you're no longer um, able to come in. That's to stop people Zoom bumming and all the rest of it. But we'll come a bit more to that later on. Um, <clears throat> however, we will be recording. Hang on. Just a minute. Are we recording this, by the way? Yes, Tony, but we only record um, the session. We don't record the um, conversation afterwards. No, I realise that. Okay, I thought, uh, yeah, okay. I just couldn't see it, that was all. Right, carry on. Now, um, we want this session to be as interactive as possible within the constraints of Zoom. So we're anticipating that you can contact, as we said, welcome when we come in on chat. Also, we use the chat for the questions. Um, we also hope you have a, a small poll along the way, which is Richard, Richard will run. And on top of that, um, <coughs> he'll, we'll, he'll probably pick up some of the questions and we'll deal, he'll either deal with them or uh, later. Um, you're also having a little time because he's, he's got in mind to try some breakout groups if anybody's actually tried to do that within a Zoom session. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so the whole purpose of these branch meetings, it's what we have to do now virtually because we can't get to our normal place at Marquette. So a bit, a bit of branch news, a bit of IOSH news, and then I'll introduce Richard formally. So the first thing about to remind everybody, because you've probably seen some of these slides before, um, we are pretty good on uh, uh, on uh, tweets. So we're pleased to receive your tweets when uh, you feel so so inclined. Not everybody is happy with tweets, but there we go. Um, we're also more importantly, we use the other parts of social media. Um, particularly LinkedIn, because we find it's easier to get things out there pretty quick. And you'll find, if you're not already familiar, that um, recordings, uh, etc., of the events that we have pretty quickly go up there and that you can um, download them. But ultimately, they will end up in the uh, IOSH website. Um, and probably some, some, if there's some questions that uh, are outstanding they be also uh, put on there but we'll see how this session goes um, now a slide you won't have seen um, this we, our branch now has got a, its own YouTube channel and whilst you might think this is duplicating what we're putting on LinkedIn I don't think that's really the way we look at it it seems to be in this day, digital age that you probably you provide many sources of to the same things because some people can't find the things they're looking for what you're looking at there is the front page of the channel that we've got at the moment the aim is to put the recordings on that but we as time progresses we'll look for other uses of it and if anybody's got any suggestions how we should do it i mean there's even thoughts that we might at some stage stream some of our sessions but obviously you can't not that particularly easy with uh, with zoom so this is an adventure for us and I think the important point is again like everything else how do you find it well something like that all you do is um, Google IOSH uh, um, YouTube channel and you'll come up with what you see see there you don't have to memorize the long uh, HTTPS at the bottom um, right next slide now, a bit on our virtual meetings, I think the fundamental point to remind everyone, if you're not already aware of that, <clears throat> we are having to change our um, login arrangements for Zoom sessions. And this is the last one, which is an open, as you see. But from now on, you will have to pre-register, uh, which is now common practice to all 
IOSH meetings, webinars, etc., etc. For those who are not totally familiar with how that's done, the tips there is that I also, I've got the two events up there, the 12th of August and the 26th of August. The 12th of August one is the IPD session we're running jointly with Wales. And the 26th of August is the one that Dr. Heising Guy is running on human capital. Um, and there are links uh, there, but the important point is if you then look at the uh, search again for the uh, IOSH webinar virtual meetings page, just put that into Google, you'll come up with the current list of all the various Zoom sessions, webinars, and more importantly, um, if you click on those, it opens you up directly to the registration page. You don't believe me? Well, I did try it a matter of an hour ago, and all the links that there I tried were all working. They opened up to the uh, register page. You put your details in, and presumably the person that's behind that will actually send you what we're showing. Well, we'll, we'll show you, send you the, the actual links. And then we've got some further sessions, which I have no further information on that. They'll obviously come up on the... Um, <coughs> the IOSH webinar or Zoom page, but you can see we've got a joint wellness session with the Yorkshire branch. And then the end of September, we got something on domestic animal hazards. Um, that's not how to look after your pet cat, but it's more to stop your pet cat biting the postman's fingers, which uh, obviously cause more problems than, than people tend to think about. Right, moving on. Just to remind you, um, those of you who were here last time, we, last, last fortnight ago, we had Stephen May, uh, Haynes, and he did a session on mates in mine. And to remind you, this was um, uh, done as a sort of a partner session to one that Louise had organised earlier for the females in that uh, fraternity to do with the menopause. It's an area which went down pretty well because it's not very well known and exploited uh, in the sense of the safety as a safety professional and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding and even <coughs> reluctance to talk about this issue and obviously the mates in mind dealt with the male side of it not um, with similar areas which people have difficulty males have difficulty to talk about so just if you want to see that again their recording is up actually on the sources as I've said now moving on now, we come back to the wider IOSH news. This is the, first, the thing we always put there first. The, the committee here, that's Chilton Committee, is welcome for new members um, uh, to join the, the committee. And we're pleased to receive anybody who uh, shows an inquest, either sh shout at anyone or, or chat to uh, Louise or whatever. There's also another thing that we're proposing to do, uh, though we have not, it's not fully set up yet, but we hope there's as a branch to take a, a new survey to find out what um, uh, members' expectations are of the sessions we have. We, we used to do it uh, for our uh, prep fix site like the, uh, at um, Markate, but now we've got Zoom, which runs more frequently, and it does give you opportunity now to run joint sessions. This is something that is we're never able to run joint sessions with the likes of Wales or or Yorkshire branch when we were sitting at um, Margate. So it, there is a new dimension to this, and it's maybe something that we just take in hand. Um, on the IOSH weekly webinars, you'll see there that Lou, um, Louise is co-hosting. This is the sessions we run on COVID-19. Louise is um, running... Uh, a session, or, or I think she's got a panel, um, yeah, panel discussion with a number of others, and uh, the details are there. Um, and as regards the normal wider IOSH webinars, the next um, for ne uh, first in for next month that met that category was the one I've shown there. But uh, again, those that list on on the webinar uh, IOSH webinar page will hopefully is updated as, as, as the information becomes available. Now, again, further reminder, that just tells you you've got to now pre-register, which we've already covered. And the uh, next bullet point on there reminds you, that if you ever get lost, <laughs> just Google uh, IOSH webinar stroke virgi vir uh, virtual um, Zoom sessions and you'll come up with the list easily enough without having to remember that HTTPS. Um, and I think this is probably the last call for this. The election, council election Barts 
uh, they have to be in on or around the 7th of August as shown there. There's links there to the, all the various uh, candidates and please take part in that. And then the final point on here, um, don't forget the current news is in our magazine and you can find it either by searching by Google or there's the link below. Right, now we come on to the interesting part of the, the session. R Richard, some of you have probably met him because he's now a member of our local team. He brings a considerable amount of expertise on the digital side and particularly its um, links to e-learning. He's done quite a lot of work over time on the e-learning process. Um, we're using Zoom here and he he's uses Zoom widely, but he's also in, over his time used many of the others um, uh, platforms and he knows quite a lot about what's the good and the bad and the ugly of each and ev every one. I think we, the problem we find with Zoom is that, um, well, yeah. Richard actually did a session here, some of you remember, about five or six weeks ago, also on Zoom. Well, why do it again? Well, I think there's many reasons. If you take the time over six, five, six weeks, the number of us have become uh, familiar with having to use Zoom was probably mushroom. And it's not only that, Zoom tends to change th th things as they add security features. So what you one minute you find you can do something, the next minute you find you can't, and then you do some research on it and you find you've actually changed it. So it is quite useful to have these catch up sessions, but I think we all get in a bit better. But I'll defer to Richard because I regard him as <laughs> far more advanced in these things than I am. So, okay, well, I'll turn off my share and let that uh, Richard uh, now join us. Right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm going to uh, switch over to share screen and you should have my full screen in front of you. If somebody can wave just to acknowledge that you've got my full screen, that's fantastic, great. Um, first of all, it's nice to see so many faces and a lot of familiar ones as well. So thank you very much for joining. But there are a few faces we can't see. Um, and it would be really nice if we could encourage you to use your uh, video. I know that some of you might not want to, or some of you um, have, have, have uh, turned it off for very good reasons. But during the interactive sessions, it would be really nice not to be staring at the little black boxes, but we'll see, we'll see how we go. Um, I'm not going to profess to be a Zoom expert. I think I've just been built up by Tony, but um, <laughs> I am somebody that's actually worked with Zoom and, and the others. And believe it or not, it was, it was nearly four months ago that we did the initial session. Um, this is uh, session number 19 of, of our virtual meetings. And uh, it doesn't seem that long ago that I, uh, that I presented a session simply on Zoom. And I'm sure people have learned a lot since then. So it's not my aim to teach you how to suck eggs, but the purpose of the session today was to look at some quick wins just some ways that we can perhaps adapt many of the video collaboration tools to help us teach over uh, the, the digital format that we're now all having to come to grips with. Although I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, uh, with uh, using digital anyway. So let's take you into uh, delivering OSH Learning. Um, so it is a follow-up session. Uh, we will be opening microphones later on. We do want to use your video. Uh, we will be using chat. However, I have a big ask. Can we use chat just for the session for the Q&A's? In other words, for the questions that we're raising during the session. I know that it's very tempting to want to use chat for other things. And to be fair, normally during our virtual meetings, we do use it for discussions. But we're going to raise a few questions for you. And it would be nice if we could use that uh, chat feature as we go. We're also going to be using polling. So uh, if you haven't used polling before, uh, it can go wrong, like everything. So, um, but I'm going to be launching that from, from here. And we're going to be looking at some practical sessions, a couple of case studies. However, if we run out of time, some of the uh, more practical sessions, we may end up leaving till the very end and just simply filming them so that you can have a look later. At the very end of this session, there is a slide set, uh, a slide page with lots of links uh, to useful sites. And I'm going to reference them as we uh, as we go through the session. I'm hoping that we will have 20 minutes at the end. We may not do, we may run out of time, but uh, normally this session would run probably around about 50 minutes. This might seem rather strange, but I'm gonna start by telling you what we're not covering because uh, for me, it's quite important. Uh, we're not gonna be looking at augmented reality tech or virtual reality tech, um, although it's, it's a key, key subject. 
we're not going to be looking at learning concepts and principles. Um, we're not going to be looking at authoring training content or learning styles or targeted learning. Um, now you might think, why am I putting this up? Um, and the reason I'm putting it up is that if you are at the early stages of your career teaching or training online, these are subjects you do need to learn about. And in fact, I've left links at the very end to a lot of these subjects. So you can go away and have a look at some of the excellent webinars that are out there. So uh, again, a strange way to start a session. What are we not covering? <laughs> That's what we're not doing today. So if you haven't been zoomed out already and you haven't had enough of the subject, um, this is what we're gonna look at. Four very, very basic areas. Briefly, we're gonna look at tech um, and just play around with some of the features that we could use and perhaps adapt to help us teach. Uh, preparation, again, related to tech, of course. The content and how we would, uh, we, we perhaps might get some of the ideas together. And quite importantly, closing a session ended by Q and A's. Now this is the slide that I used originally. Um, and of course we do have lots of different video collaboration tools out, of, out there. Um, my history was originally with WebEx and Skype. <clears throat> and I have to say, it's nice to see a few ex-colleagues on the screen today who've joined in, probably to see if I've lost it or not over the last couple of years, um, because we did use WebEx um, an awful lot along with, uh, along with Skype. Today I'm gonna reference Zoom, although obviously other apps are available and I'm conscious that some of you may not be using Zoom as a product. So perhaps the best way to start this session is to uh, take a quick look at um, what you are using. So we're gonna dive into a poll. Um, we're gonna uh, decide to use uh, one of the polls, which is poll one, and poll one is being launched now. So let me just change slides. You should actually have on your screen a poll. Uh, I'll duplicate the poll as well so that you can see it on the slide set. Um, and if you could take just a couple of seconds to respond to that, that would be great. Um, we're asking you what device you're using, first of all. And then we'll ask you the next question, what is the app? So you can see that populating. Some of you will see it populating. And at the end of it, I will uh, present it to the group so that you can all see it. We've got 75% uh, of you have voted so far. That sounds like the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, and at the moment, the predominance is those of you are mainly using Windows PCs, a few on smartphones. And uh, you might notice that on my, uh, on my poll, I've got other. And I have to say that this is a cheat. Uh, I'm always worried that I might forget to put an option. So I always put other down just in case I've missed something by default. Okay, so we've got uh, nearly 90% of you polled. I'm going to close the polling. and I'm going to share the results with you. Um, I must admit, I thought there'd be more people using Apple products. So um, I know that that's, uh, that's normally the case when we're running the, uh, running the sessions. Why did I choose this as the first poll? Well, I think that whenever you're delivering a course or whether you're authoring a session, one of the critical factors, as well as knowing what app the people are using, of course, is to know what device they're working with because each feature will be different. Different, app, different devices will have different visual appearances. And of course, it's helpful for you as the person delivering the coaching. I suspect that if you're delivering to your company in-house, you'll know whether they've all got a, an Android smartphone and they're all using a Lenovo laptop. But when you're delivering as a consultant, perhaps you may not necessarily know the answer to this question. So again, if you're wondering why I've actually put the slide up with a question for the poll as well, in my experience, if people are using smartphones, sometimes it's not that easy to read the poll. Now, Zoom's okay, but people like Go Meetings and Go Webinars, it's actually not that easy to read their polling. So that's the reason why I've put it on the screen for you today. So we'll stop sharing the results. And you should have a slide up there with a statement on it for you. Uh, several months ago, I, uh, I had a conversation with a very close friend of mine who's a, a deputy headmistress at a very large school in Hertfordshire. And she said something to me which was quite shocking. And, and yes, it was on a Zoom call because at that time we'd all been locked down. She actually said that she felt forced to leave her role because she was told she had to use MS Teams. She was told she had no option. And she felt that that was uh, an undue pressure on her. Now, when, when I told her that I was going to use her example in this presentation today, she said, Richard, 
please tell the audience my age. I think it's critical. Well, she's the same age as me, she's 58. I'm not quite sure that it is that critical, but um, she did ask me to mention that. So my question for you really is along similar lines. What do you think are actually the barriers to using tech and do we embrace change with tech? So perhaps for the first time today, we could use the chat feature. Um, I'd really value your opinions. Um, do we embrace change? And what are the barriers to using tech? So I'll give you just a couple of seconds to do that using the chat feature. Um, and what we'll do later on at the end of the session is our host, Tony, or somebody else from the committee will actually come into the, into the meeting and we'll talk about the chats that we've, uh, we've had at the beginning. Now, of course, you can part those questions if you like, and we can come back to them. And it's really not necessarily about answering these questions today. It's more about the process of using chat and polling that we're exploring, I suspect. I'd like to start the session proper, if I could, by just a quick explanation. Um, one of the things that often causes confusion, not just in Zoom, but certainly in lots of the other apps, is what's the difference between a webinar and a web meeting? And uh, in Zoom, <coughs> excuse me, it's quite specific. In others, it's less. But I must say the gap between the two is getting thinner and thinner by the day. And I suspect one day in the near future, we will have one style of meeting, which will do all. But I think it's fair to say that most of us are familiar with the webinar, which is designed primarily for one directional information. And normally the speaker doesn't always see their audience, although that has recently changed. So it's more about numbers. It's less about interactions and interactivity. Um, I suspect that you may be using different apps, therefore you may have different features in your apps, but that's the major difference. We use meetings at, uh, at IOSH Children Branch, along with the rest of IOSH for their branch meetings, because we want to engage, we want to have that interaction. So you shouldn't have two questions the same here. You should actually have another question that asks you about your app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move very quickly on. The question I have for you, sorry, can I just go back one slide? That's my error, not, uh, not that's the slides error, not to, uh, we're going to launch the second, the second poll. This is the, uh, the fate of trying to be too clever, I suspect. There we go. So my question was, it's not the question that's on the screen, it's the question that is on the poll. The question is, what video collaboration app do you use for work? What do they say about checking your slides before you deliver a presentation? It's live. Okay, so um, we'll share the polling with you, but at the moment it looks like Teams actually is in the, in the lead, which doesn't surprise me. Skype, WebEx is on there. Other, I'm gonna to have to ask the question about other because I'm curious about that. Uh, so how many have we got? We've got 90%, nearly there. I'm going to end the polling at that point. And I'm going to share the results with you. I'm quite surprised actually. I thought it was going to be more about Zoom, but I, I guess it's uh, it will be determined by the type of audience we have here today. So if you're working for a larger organisation or um, a local authority, perhaps um, Meets is interesting. We've only got uh, one user using Google Meets, although Google claimed to be uh, picking up the market share. So we're, we're not we're not uh, we're not displaying that. So I'm going to stop sharing the results there. And as I said earlier, it's quite important that we do actually appreciate what app is being used, although um, when, when, we're, when we're writing or when we're authoring. Using the chat feature again, what I'd like to do is perhaps ask you a question um, about ideas and how we deliver training. Um, I know that I think, well, I think that through necessity, we've sort of been forced into being more innovative and more imaginative as we've had to deliver stuff online. And I suspect we're all learning as we go. Um, but I wonder whether you've picked up any bright ideas lately. Have you attended a meeting? Have you attended um, a quiz? Uh, was it work related? Did, where somebody came up with a really good idea and you thought, wow, that could be used um, during one of my sessions, or I could adapt that for coaching or for teaching. Um, the stuff that I'm delivering online. Of course, I'm talking predominantly, I suspect, to an OSH audience, although many people are obviously using this for lots of different areas of coaching and training. So have you picked up any bright ideas lately? Um, 
I'd, I'd like to share one which sort of prompted the question if I could. Um, I was um, on a quiz, surprise, surprise, and uh, this was on Teams, and somebody came up with the idea of using scavenger hunt. Now, if you're on a, of an age and you remember scavenger hunt, it's where you tell the audience to get up, go away, and find something really, really quickly and get back, and the first one back to the table has, has effectively won. And I thought, could I use that? And Dylan's trying it now. He's obviously going away to have a look and see if he can find something. But I was going to suggest you could actually use it for, um, I don't know, PPE. Um, I, I have to throw the letters PPE in, otherwise the committee will be disappointed with me. Um, we could go away and do a test or check on PPE. Go and have a look at your FFP3 face mask. Go and check it. Go and make sure it's stored correctly. Bring it back. It's, it's silly. It may not work in some more academic subjects, but certainly if you were delivering induction or orientation coaching, um, it would be quite good to get that feedback. Um, I'm keen to see this in, in a minute, so I'm going to ask the committee members if we are getting uh, stuff back on the chat, what are the sort of ideas that we can share? And it, this is really what today's about. It's being collaborative, it's sharing ideas and, um, and sort of looking at some quick wins as we go along. This one is actually a selfish question. This is a question that is from the presenter today. It would be really nice for me to know a little bit more about my audience and uh, it may help me to temper the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a poll. I'm going to launch the third poll. And the third poll, as you can see, is a question about what percentage of your time is spent delivering learning. So let's give you just a couple of seconds. You'll see I use these opportunities to grab myself a drink while you're doing it. Mm. Okay. We still have a few more of you to... Uh, I'm sure you all know the answer to this question, so I will leave it on there for just a little bit longer, um, if that's okay. Um, uh, we're nearly there, so we have nearly 90% of the votes in. I'm going to uh, close the poll now at 90%, and I'm going to share the results with you so that you can actually see, uh, see our audience. Um, you may think you would have put these polls in a different sequence or a different order for a training session, but as I say, really today is more about just the ideas and some quick wins. Um, I did expect more on the full time. I, I thought we might have a few more full time consultants uh, on the screen, but uh, obviously we don't today. So that's that's an interesting one. Um, I might also use that figure later on when we talk about uh, developing and authoring learning. So let me stop sharing the results. And let me just uh, move on. Again, the slide really is to demonstrate how we could use chat, how we could sort of get engaged with chat. But um, I just wonder what your view is, because we've got quite a few people here that do an awful lot of learning, uh, teaching or training. Um, so the question is, would you classify this as e-learning? Um, I must say, I'm looking at Bridget at the moment, because I know she does an awful lot of this. Thanks for joining us, Bridget. I'm really pleased that you, you've, you've come along. Um, and is this part of blended learning? Now, blended learning, Maybe something you're familiar with, it may not be. Um, and if you are, I'm going to share with you an ex sorry, if you're not, I'm going to share with you an example during the case study about uh, blended learning that you probably are already doing or something similar. So there we go, a couple of other questions for the chat which we're going to come back to. So we will have a few questions to explore um, at the end of the session. So tech. Now, this is where I get excited. I love tech. I know there's a few of you in, in the, on the call that really enjoy tech as well, but I'm going to not concentrate on the high end stuff. The feeling I guess at the moment, and people have been telling me this, my clients have been telling me this, they don't want to go and spend money on kit at the moment. They want to use what they've got or they want to do, do very, very carefully with the budget. So what we'll do is we'll look at some quick wins using the, check, the tech. I, I'm conscious that most of you will have done all of this before so i'm going to fly through this really really quickly so please bear with me um, now of course some of the checks that we do before we deliver an event or a session is very much based about where we're working from so if you're working from a home office or if you're working from a business obviously some of these questions some of these suggestions will differ 
you will notice that I'm running currently, um, and it's not live, I'm cheating, of course, it's a pre-recorded video. On the right-hand side of my screen, I'm just doing a quick check on speed. That's actually not the speed that I'm operating at at the moment, but that tends to be the minimum that you would use in order to get good quality video, good quality sound, and no stuttering with your video. So do a quick check if you can. But of course, it's not all about um, checking the speed of, uh, of the router or the speed of your Wi-Fi. Um, there are some other simple things that we would do very, very quickly to make sure that we're working safely. Uh, sorry, speedily, not safely and safely. Um, check with other users that are in the building. So if you're at home, I'm afraid it's switching off the Nintendo and the Game Station and the Playstations. Tell other users that uh, you will be using uh, the system, you'll be using the broadband or the Wi-Fi. Um, it's always a, a good step. Switch off other devices. The one that always gets forgotten, and I have to say I'm guilty of this, you probably won't see it because I've got a virtual background, is my mobile. I always forget to switch this off and it's using the data or it's using the broadband. So it's something that uh, you might want, to, uh, might want to remember. Now, a statistic that's quite frightening. Um, I suspect that most of us will be using uh, the data from, uh, sorry, the broadband from a, from a system at home or at work. However, if you are brave enough to use data using a mobile device, um, I wonder if you would or can appreciate how much data is used. So let me, let me ask the question and see if, if this surprises you, the answer. One hour Zoom call uh, with, a, with video, similar to the ones that we're running with you today, how much data do you think it would actually use? Now, I haven't got a poll for this. How much data is actually being used typically? Now, I'm not going to ask you to use the chat for this, but it, it's just surprising that it, it's between 300 and 700 megabytes of data. Now, that's an average, obviously, that depends on where you're working from. But for many people, if they were using their own data, that's probably a month's supply. So it's an awful lot that you need to be aware of. So it does use and does crunch quite a lot of data. If Zoom is the de facto choice by your business, you don't have an option, unfortunately. But for many of us, we do. We can flip from one to the other. And is Zoom the best option? Well, at the end of this session, there is a really good comparison chart, which has been produced by an American organization on a survey recently, which shows all the benefits and features of the different apps that are out there in the market at the moment. And you can use it very much if you're designing a course. It's quite handy to have a look at what's out there. So that's one of the links that we'll share with you at the end. It would be nice to open up the pictures and the screens to see what you're using at the moment. I'm, I'm, always, I'm a very no, nosy person. It would be quite good to see. I know, I know I've seen a few of my colleagues on the committee, but using the, using the tech is what we're going to look at now. Um, many of us might be familiar with standing up and presenting, and this example that I'm sharing with you on the screen is from GoWebinar. Um, if any of you have attended GoWebinars, they're very good, very polished, very streamlined, designed to target larger groups. And they've kindly let me use this image, which was designed for somebody delivering a podcast. Well, not all of us are going to be able to afford that. And in case you're puzzled and wondered, what does Richard use? I felt I'm obliged to share with you uh, what I've got on my desktop at the moment. Um, the coffee cup is empty at the moment, regrettably. Uh, so very, very quickly from left to right. Podcast microphone, a condenser microphone with a pop filter. Am I using it today? No. Um, I'm actually using the microphone that's built into the camera. And I wanted to demonstrate that because you can get a lot better sound quality if you invest just, uh, just into a sound uh, microphone like this. The headset, of course, if you're delivering and you want quality or you've got distractions behind you, again, that and a small condenser mic is quite handy. And I, talking to Carrie before the meeting started from IOSH, we were joking about the fact how many people have got twin screens up on their desktops. Um, I'll be curious, I can't see every face, but how many of you have actually got two screens up at the moment? Can show of hands or a thumbs up? That's a lot, isn't it? So we've all been, uh, been investing heavily in, in the tech. Um, I also have a spare Android and an, I, uh, an iPad because I author e-learning content, so I actually have to test it. Um, or oh, we're going to see Bridget. She's actually sharing it with us, which is great. So <laughs> you can have a look at Bridget's live. She's sharing her desktop with us. Um, but I also have an Android and an iPad there, which I use for text. I actually use that for my narration or for my script so that I don't have to uh, fiddle about with the screens as I'm talking to you. 
So some quick wings really about using the, the tech. And again, I'm sure many of you are doing this, so bear with me, I'm gonna rattle through it very, very quickly. Microphones and headsets, we're all familiar with, I'm sure by now. Uh, webcams, it's interesting actually. There was an article yesterday in the papers saying that there's a world shortage of webcams. I think if you go on eBay, you'll find them for 20 quid. I believe it was probably Logitech that wrote the article. So um, uh, they, they are available. We're gonna come back to the webcam in just a moment. You may find yourself sometimes needing to have a Wi-Fi hotspot. And of course, we've, we've all become familiar with using the phone as a Wi-Fi hot, hotspot for our laptop or our tablets. But you could go one step further if you wanted to invest in a little bit of security in case something was to go wrong. Now, I'm tempting fate by saying those words going wrong because I'm in a Virgin area and Virgin lately have been letting us down big time. So I'm, I'm really tempting fate. But you could invest in a, in a wireless router doesn't need an awful lot of technical knowledge to use one of these devices. They start at around 50 quid, you plug in a SIM, and it uses data instead of the broadband that you'd be using at home. Um, the expensive one at the bottom is actually about 250 quid, so I wouldn't, you know, they, they vary quite a lot. Some of them are very clever, they kick in if you lose connection. So should I lose connection with Virgin, it will go straight over to my, my wireless, and effectively you shouldn't notice much difference, although it doesn't always work every time, unfortunately. So let's have a look at some quick wins, um, see if any of these, and then what we'd like to do is to, to share some with you, and uh, we're going to put you into a, into a meeting room in just a moment, sorry, a waiting room in just a moment. Um, recording. As Tony mentioned, this session is being recorded, um, but you might notice on the screen and the image in front of you that I've actually done a live screen capture. Now that software is readily available and I, I do worry that although some people believe that their meetings are not being recorded, there are people out there that could very easily capture the screen and actually on many of the apps, I'm not sure whether everyone is aware of this, but it also does um, speech to text. So you do get the complete narration of the script. So after the Zoom call today, Louise will get an email, I'll get an email which will tell us what was said and it gives it it written down for you. So I think perhaps when we're delivering sessions, we need to consider the fact that unlike a face-to-face -face meeting, um, where generally, although you can bypass this, it's not being recorded, there is always now the technical option of recording any session that's done digitally. We're gonna go from my mistake of saying waiting rooms, which was obviously where you land, into Zoom's breakout rooms in just a moment. So we'll use this as an example. But there are some great ways of using both the breakout rooms, the meeting rooms and the chat feature for setting goals, setting objectives, setting targets, particularly on training courses that you may have authored already. I appreciate that you might be more or, or let be more restrained if you're delivering an accredited course where you are already told what you must contain, what it must contain and how it's delivered. Did anybody notice what was on the video at the end? Just looking around, did anybody see that video on the camera at the end? As I was recording it, I fell off my deck chair and I don't think anybody noticed. I didn't have a drink in my hand, but I was just wondering if anybody in the audience had actually spotted the, uh, the last few seconds. <laughs> okay, um, right. As you probably know, you can share the toolbar from Zoom, Teams, Skype with your audience. I'm not that brave. I'm actually simply using screen grabs at the moment. So I'm just sharing with you some screenshots. Um, we've obviously used the polls. You can create those. It is much, much easier to create them before the event, although you can create them on the fly if you wish, but I would advise strongly against it. The breakout room that we're going to use in a moment, you can prepare breakout sessions and breakout rooms on most of the apps. But be careful because obviously today we don't pre-register for today's call. So we didn't know who was going to be on the meeting. Therefore, we couldn't create the breakout session. So what I'm going to do, and, and this is where it can go wrong, is I'm going to put you into meeting rooms automatically. So I don't choose, it just selects three rooms or four rooms and you will be plopped into those rooms by the software itself, not by me. And we're gonna do that in just a second. What I'd like to point out is something that I think is really important and many people forget. Uh, I don't think I could run this session without a helper, um, a moderator. 
Um, and certainly having someone in the background, if you're lucky enough to have them, is very, very important. There are some simple messages also that that helper can send to the speaker, or the host in this case, that are really useful. And the features on image three on your screen sort of tell people that, uh, you know, Richard, get a move on, Richard, slow down, Richard, stop, Richard, we've had enough. Um, I know that you can use the thumbs up and thumbs down option as an audience, but my co-hosts can actually see another screen which allows them to send me a message and remind me. Now, most of um, the other apps have something very, very similar to this. I'm conscious of time, and I don't want Louise to get the big shepherd's crook and pull me off and with Tony. So I'm gonna try and get a move on just, uh, just to cover off some of these things very, very quickly. Um, if you haven't tried sharing devices, it's actually quite a good feature that you can share devices with most of the apps nowadays. You'll notice on the right hand side of the screen is my iPad. Um, so I could, if I wanted to share with you software that's on there or any other features or video or content, if I wanted to use it for that. So that's quite handy as well. Now, this is where I'm going to be very brave. Um, you can, of course, use other cameras. Um, some of the apps allow you to use up to five different devices. I'm only going to use one extra device today. So I have in my office set up an overhead camera, which will actually be used as a spare device. So I can actually tell the app that I want to use the webcam. If you are struggling buying a webcam and, and the stories we're reading have a degree of truth, then what you can do is if you're lucky enough to own a digital SLR, you could buy yourselves a very cheap capture card like the one in the screen, which costs around about 10 quid from eBay. That means you could plug your old Canon or old Nikon digital SLR straight into it and use it. Um, I would advise to be careful though, because you might end up with some really high definition, high quality images, which some people can't get the benefit from. So it's worth testing, worth having a play, but it's 10 quid and working. Now, I, you should all have my screen that says using the tech. That's correct, isn't it? So full screen shared with everybody, which is fantastic. Okay, let's move on. Just one question on the use of a tablet to monitor, because I was thinking of doing that. But I, am I right as if you use a tablet, you, you effectively have two versions of yourself. So the person's on the gate has to expect the fact that you have got two sessions running. Is that right? Can, can I, it, it does depend on whether you're using Zoom or some of the other apps. Okay, okay. Well, so, take Zoom, for instance. Take, take Zoom. Well, one of the cheats, which I was going to share with you, and of course many of you have tried, is yes, you can join a meeting um, on another device, which was, I think, what Tony's, Tony's referring to. Um, and what I was going to suggest is that if the camera doesn't work, you could actually use another device by pre-registering or logging into the meeting using your phone or your smartphone or your, um, or your Android tablet so that you can actually use that as a, as a spare device, as a spare camera. So you can log in or enter a meeting twice on Zoom, but you can't do it on all of the other apps. I know, and I, I can't be specific because I'm not as familiar with uh, things like GoMeets, which I know you, I, I'm not sure you can. Perhaps somebody from the audience in a moment can, uh, can advise me whether you can or can't on, on Meets. I was going to do that, uh, Richard, um, but I thought it would cause problems with the cyber bounce if they saw two versions of me. I think the cyber bounce has just lost his job, Tony, to be honest with you here. So um, mo moving on to what seems now a rather ironic slide is about using the tech and getting clever. I think uh, Richard needs to do the basics first before he gets clever. But I thought I'd share this with you, which did work. Um, and we've tried it with one of our clients is... One of our clients had a, a traffic management issue problem and they needed to train a lot of new staff about traffic management systems on their work, on their work sites, but they couldn't send their staff out to the work sites because of lockdown. So what they decided to do, because one of them was a real gadget freak, was they wanted to do a live transmission using a, web, uh, using a Mavic Pro, which is the drone here, and then streaming directly onto uh, a Zoom call, which they did. Now, to be fair, they used a third party piece of software to do it, but it was very, very clever. And they simply filmed the overhead view to explain to the staff, you know, what the issues were. And it was all relating, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this, around forklifts and traffic management and people movement and segregation. So it was a really good aerial view. It was live. It was of their sites. But of course, because they couldn't get their staff out there, it was a great way to use a very short half an hour session on Zoom using this live. 
which does seem to have lost a little bit of impact after the fact I couldn't use the camera. But there we go. Preparation. And I was prepared, but obviously uh, not as well prepared as I should have been. So when it comes to preparation, there are some things that I, I would really recommend. Now, this is an article that's not written, wasn't written by myself, but I would really recommend it. If you haven't found the BBC Work Life app, um, there's an article there written by a Chinese uh, journalist called Man Yo Yang. And she has written a great article. A lot of it is collaborative content about, is it tiring using video tools? Do we work harder with video chat? Uh, and I suspect the answer with most of us is yes. I was trying to work hard then uh, a few moments ago. And also the challenge of silence, which does have a degree of irony about it now. Um, and the fact that anything more than 1.2, two seconds becomes very noticeable when you're doing a, a live streamed call. So again, it's on the links at the end of the session. So please go away and have a read. It's really, really uh, a, good, a good read. Right, quick case study, then we're gonna dive into the, uh, the waiting, into the breakout rooms. Does anybody remember this? Or have you all gone back to this? Um, this isn't a picture from my past. It's one I managed to find on Google, but um, it does remind me and of, of what I did in a previous role. And, and I can see a few of my colleagues on the screen, that are ex colleagues that have joined us today and will probably smile at this one. I suspect that many of you are all delivering something very, very similar to this. So I'd like to share with you a very, very brief case study. Um, one of the jobs that I had in my previous role was to deliver management and director workshops for uh, managing health and safety. Uh, we didn't put people on accredited courses straight away. We had an in-house course, which was two days residential. Um, I always smile at the word residential because to me that always meant you're working in the evening, Richard. But um, so residential courses were, uh, were key. The course itself contained three elements. Um, today, we would talk about this as blended learning. The first element was pre-course work, which was done on our learning platform, our learning management system, or portal, many of you may call it. And there were a number of basically learning modules that were delivered uh, online to the new member of staff. During the residential course, which was face-to-face, -face, we would also have video conferencing. And I have to say, this is where I got my experience with WebEx and with Skype, um, where we would invite guest speakers into the sessions direct using video collaboration. Um, the one that comes to mind, we, we, the last one we used was for drug awareness and drug testing policies. So we had experts come in uh, and jump in onto the call. And at the end of the two days face-to-face -face training, we would assess the learning patterns, the, alert, the learning pathways by using a, a webinar, which was face-to-face -face with, the, uh, with the, the, the delegates. We only had 12 on the course. Um, and then it was tested via the learning portal again. So different methods of develop, delivering training, different methods, but I'm sure many of you have, have adopted this. Well, of course, today we're having to combine most of it, I suspect, as the face-to-face -face learning has taken the hit. So from my own experience, and many of you I'm sure will have shared this, do tell your participants what to expect when you're delivering um, a course or a session. And one of the things that I've broken right at the beginning was the length of, and the duration of the session. Um, and it's going to come up at the end of this slide set, but I'll mention it now, is how long should a, an online session be? Um, and it might be something that we can discuss and debate if we get the opportunity. Oh dear, this is coming back to bite me. Prepare for tech failures uh, for audio and visual was what I was hoping to mean. Um, but of course, one of the things that can happen is you can lose audio or video when you're transmitting. Um, so of course, what we sometimes tell our audience is that you might lose the picture, you might lose me, um, just for a few minutes whilst you just have audio only. So for an audience, that's not too, too much of a problem. Um, so at this point, I will say thank you very much, Louise, for jumping in and, uh, and trying to rescue me. Um, using the rooms as an opportunity, of course, if you do stumble, you can put people into the waiting rooms or the breakout rooms, which is quite handy. Um, and as we've discovered, having a moderator or having a helper is integral. And I know not everybody's going to have that luxury, but I have to say, without help, sometimes we can, uh, we can have problems. Now, this is a very subjective suggestion here, and I'd be really keen to know what people think about this. Limit it to 25 participants. 
I suspect your employers are going to turn around and say, no, we want 150 on it, or we want 200 on it. Or your clients might say, no, no, I want to get the best from bucks. I want, I want 100 people on it. What is your view? So whilst we've got the opportunity, and I'm not running too late because I'm, I'm really catching up with the slides, I wonder from a, a chat point of view, whether you could give me some feedback on that. It's not one of the questions that's on my screen, but uh, how, how many participants do you think we should have on a, a session such as this to be able to get feedback and uh, to transfer information? So I'm gonna have a quick look at our chat. In fact, Tony, can you see the chat at the moment as our host? I'll ask you, I'll switch your microphone on. Can you see our, can you see our chat lines at the moment, Tony? Yeah, yeah, was, the chat line's coming up and a lot of, lot of folks are saying, um, hang on, there's, I've seen a 15, I've seen a 6 to 8, 35. I was thinking more, deep, I think you have to define what the purpose of the session is, because we're talking about participants, I would say you've got to limit the number, the more people are expecting to uh, interact. I mean, if, if this is the difference between a webinar, uh, some webinars, and, a, and an interactive Zoom session, because you can have as a, a webinar, you can have two, three, four, five hundred people, because you're not expecting much to come by. In a session like this, where everybody's bringing their own questions, you've got to cut down the numbers. And I mean, probably 10 might be a max. Probably 25 is probably pushing that limits. I, as, as I said, as I said, thank you, Tony, for that. Because as I said right from the outset, uh, today was just an example, sort of a scattergun approach to some of the tools you could use. And of course, a dependent was, was what I was expecting. Uh, the feedback to, to sort of say was, uh, you know, what are we teaching? What are we covering? Um, I, I do feel, however, most of us or many Bosch professionals will be perhaps pushed because of the expectation to have high numbers. But that's just a, a personal opinion. I would also mention the fact about short duration. There's been an awful lot of work done on bite-sized chunks and sort of the amount of time that should be spent on learning elements. Um, I wonder if you can cast your mind back to the 1990s. Some of you may have been students or parents at that time. You might have been familiar with BBC Bite Sized or Go uh, or SAM, Smart SAM, and Smart SAM Studies, which were the learning methodologies that were adopted by the education establishments back then. And it's actually proven now, obviously, all those years later, that most people quite enjoy learning with uh, with those bite-sized chunks and I know that the company I used to work for were very keen on uh, creating sessions that were just bite-sized. So take a break. Um, you might want to use the sessions to take a break. I want to take a break now but that's for another reason. So I'm going to also ask you about survey tools. Now um, I wonder how many of you are using survey tools. I, I guess most of you are probably familiar with SurveyMonkey by now. Most of us have been using it. Uh, other survey tools are available. Uh, Google have one. I, I quite like using Microsoft uh, Forms. I don't know if any of you are using it. Obviously, a high percentage of you were Microsoft uh, users at the beginning, so um, I suspect you're using Forms, and there are other tools out there. Now, the breakout room. Fingers crossed this is going to work a lot better than the last session. You'll notice actually on my screen that there's also a QR code. I wonder how many of you are using QR codes. Um, the QR code I've left on here from my previous client, who's a big lover of using QR codes for information that's relevant and changed. Um, actually, if you click on that QR code, it will take you to a detailed session about today's, uh, today's sort of our, our set, if you like. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just briefly explain what we expect from the breakout room. We're going to put you into three rooms. Three rooms? Yeah, three rooms. And um, it's going to be done randomly because uh, had you pre-registered, of course, we could have done this before the event, which I would always recommend. In your room, you may or may not find a committee member who will be a spokesperson for you and lead the session. If you don't have a committee member, I'd like you to nominate somebody in your group. Now, to make this work, it would be really nice if you could use your uh, video cameras, but I, I understand, again, if, you, if you're unable to. So we're going to give you... It says five because I'm running behind. I'm going to give you three, three minutes to have a quick chat with each other about this topic. Now, this is a cheat on behalf of the uh, IOSH committee. Which future topics would you like to see covered in our virtual meeting sessions here at IOSH Chilton? And the second question is, what is the ideal time slot for you to attend a virtual meeting? So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to uh, put you into uh, a room. 
So breakout rooms. So I'm going to assign you into three rooms. And you can't see this on your screen, although I could share it with you if I wanted to. I'm going to do it automatically. Um, we are is, going... it, is it easy to do, Richard? Yes. I mean, uh, what I'm going to do when you come back, I'm going to show you the screenshot of what I've just done. So for time, I'm jumping ahead of myself, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create three rooms. I'm going to put your, the participants into the room. Uh, the options I'm going to give you is just three minutes and you will have a countdown of 20 seconds. Kurt. Kurt? Um, yeah, I actually I didn't didn't get what room it was, but yes, I was. Ah, I was, right, okay. I did well, cheer, that's, yeah. that's important because <laughs> yeah. now, now I did, you, you should have seen, you should have all seen a couple of messages that popped up as well, um, which came up towards the end just before the countdown. And of course you could have used that to reiterate and remind people about the questions because that sometimes can be a problem that you've closed the screen, sent somebody into the meeting, into the breakout room, and they've forgotten what the question was all about. So it's worth repeating it. Kurt, could I take just one example perhaps from you of the questions about future topics for, for us and also time slots? Yeah, so, so it actually was quite interested in this uh, meeting room. It was my first uh, experience. Um, <laughs> we, we only got to the first question and time ran right. out. But um, maintenance of our CPD records was okay. one of the uh, topics of interest. Okay, great. And I'm going I'm to do this really, really quickly just to, so that we can. Uh, meeting room two, and um, if you're not sure who I was, think that was uh, I think that was me. It was, Tony, because I've just popped the screen back up again. So did we get one example from you? Just, just um, Right. The, the way I tackled it, I asked the first question, there was dead silence. So I didn't hang around. I asked the second question because I thought we'd get a reply on that. And we did get a reply on that. It was around lunchtime was probably the, the consensus. Then I went back to question one. And we started talking about uh, this issue of reasonable provision where people have to make great reasonable provision. Just, I mean, it was following on from the, the sort of male issues, male mental health and the menopause and these things are not, not just categorised that, there are other issues uh, and obviously this business of reasonable provision may need some explanation but that's, and then the three minutes ran out. I, I, I have to apologise, I'm sure you all understand why I had no, to... No, that's all right. <laughs> just, just to demonstrate. So by, by, by default, uh, meeting room number three may or may not have had a lead spokesperson. Did we end up with one? We, well, Bridget and I sort of like both jumped in, but we were listening more into Gareth's conversation. Ah. So it did make it a little bit difficult to communicate between everybody. But one thing we did come up with is the, from the topics point of view, okay. uh, sorry, not the topics, the, the time slots that actually going back to pre sort of lockdown, you always knew on that particular day of the month, you were at this particular time at a particular location. Right. And by having that consistency, I've already diarised the Chilton branches right the way through. As, place just as a reminder so i think the time slots quite you know work quite well that that's good that's good to hear um i should mention at this point that when you record a session it doesn't record the polls it doesn't record the breakout rooms unless you tell it to in advance so uh, if anybody wants to mention that to gareth we didn't record any of that during that closed uh, during that closed breakout session i i think breakout rooms are great obviously if you use teams a lot of you do you use lobbies which is similar um and i'm sure you've had a practice with that so if I may, I'm going to move very, very quickly on and ask you to close off your mics, if that's OK. Thank you very much for the, uh, the participation there. I'm sorry I had to cut it so short. It would have been nice to, to have spent more time on it. So just some quick wins about content. Um, one of the things we forget is to allow for differing devices, of course. Um, for those of you using tablets, sometimes it's worth remembering to reminding people to swipe their screen so that when they're in the meeting rooms, breakout rooms or in the meeting itself, that they can get a full screen and a full screen image. Um, animations, I, I'm not sure everybody liked animations until about five years ago. We use animations at the beginning of our meetings, the one with Louise, oh, did I say that was Louise? Um, at the beginning of the session. Um, they're often very valuable in my experience for setting goals, setting objectives, or technical explainers, which is obviously what a lot of people use the animation software for. I've left some links at the end for you to have a look at the different options. We all know as trainers that we never assume understanding, but in this case, it's more about the tech, it's more about the features of the app than actually the learning content or the objectives. And if you are delivering content, which is why I like to use the QR codes, to be honest, keep all your files that you're using in one place, otherwise you do end up wasting a lot of time trying to find 
content. So these were my quick wins, things that I would use as time saving features if I was uh, if I was running a session. I would also, and I've seen lots of people struggle with this, be careful with graphs. Um, we're all familiar or have been familiar with the uh, government summaries in the afternoons up until recently. And I think you've seen four different uh, design companies go in with their graphs and graphics about COVID-19 and some of it works and some of it doesn't. So it's very, be very aware that if you're working with smaller devices, graphs sometimes do just don't work during the learning session. And maybe, maybe now's the time to experiment. Are you all using PowerPoint or are you using something different? And I'd like to very quickly share this. This is one of the things I was gonna miss, but I'm, I don't wanna miss it because I think it's quite important. Um, some of you might use Sway, and this is something that was produced from a customer of mine's information. We just sort of guided them to a different way of doing it. So Google have their own version, Apple have their own version of PowerPoint. Obviously, at the last calculation, there were 15 different versions of presentation software out there. A lot of it's free. Um, and if you haven't used Sway before, um, I'm sharing my screen with you. Um, and I'm going to ask you the question, can you all see problems, causes, solutions? Okay. Now, a lot of you will be familiar with this. So I'm not here to teach you how to suck eggs, but you probably know that when you're using Internet Explorer or anything similar, that when you press F11, you can get rid of the toolbar. Now, that's quite important when you're teaching online. Be careful because there are some apps out there where F11 is also the control feature, and this is gonna make me smile, that takes you back to the spare camera. In my case, it probably won't work, but uh, today, there we go. So this is Sway, if you haven't used it, it's a, a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. And I have actually taken it a step further, and I'm rushing this. The text isn't mine, the text is the client's, uh, client's text that they use for one of their induction courses. Um, but what they've done is they've embedded, and I've jumped to, jumped the gun there, uh, a embedded forms document. So again, this could be linked using QR, this could be sent to your trainees, this can be personalized if you prepare it in advance. And, and again, interesting to know, how many of you are actually using forms like this already? Many of you, show of hands perhaps? No, okay, not as many as I thought there might be. So very, very quickly. We'll close, we'll shut down Sway, and we'll come to the end of the session. If you don't mind, I'm gonna jump past this one because I think we might get more value from this one today, if that's okay. So I'd like to open up the mics to the um, host and to any of the other leaders of the particular work groups that we had a second ago. Any bright ideas? So from the chat boxes, Tony, did any of the bright ideas come up on the chat feature earlier on? Anything that people have learned from going on quizzes or social calls on Zoom or anything that we can share with our audience today that might help them with learning? Um, I think Richard, um, and it, this came up earlier, Bridget um, had a comment to make about blended learning. Mm -hmm. Bridget, should we hand the mic over to Bridget? Yeah. Uh, actually, kind of Richard really more or less covered it later on after I made the comment, really, which was um, the question, Richard, you asked was, is e-learning blended learning? And I think absolutely no. E-learning is, is, should be part of a blended learning solution. Unfortunately, although I kind of make 40% of my income from, from creating e-learning, what worries me about the clients for the products that I create is that they don't understand blended learning. They think that e-learning is it. They don't do a lot of training needs analysis at the beginning. Um, they don't necessarily test that the learning has been applied in the workplace. So, which is, I mean, why, which is why I've mentioned your article at the end, Bridget. Thank so you. Uh, I, I will get the plug in for you on your Thank behalf you. at the very end because you've written but an I, but excellent I think, article. I think, I think you laid it out very well in that slide after I made the comment, really, which is that, you know, my e-learning, brilliant. Have some e-learning as preparatory work for a course. Yeah. Maybe do some virtual learning, some, some virtual classroom learning like we're doing today so you can actually get to know people. And then maybe instead of a four-day classroom course for people staying in a hotel, actually with the combination of the e-learning and the virtual classroom, maybe you just have them in for one day at the end where they do practical, if it's say a risk assessment course, fire risk assessment or general risk assessment, they can do a practical with you or they can do, you know, if it's pure, whatever it is, you can do that practical on that last day and you can do the exam under visual aid conditions. So I'm, I'm absolutely for that blended approach. Um, 
this is the other bit I want to include as part of the blend, though. Ah, uh, no, no, no. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to move on because you, you, yes. you, you, you're an absolute no, exactly. tech, tech mad person, and I knew you'd want to mention that. So I, 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 just, I will just share your link. On the on the bright ideas thing, I was just going to mention Slido. Um, and oh yeah. Is, this I is love Slido. I mean, yes, we've used Slido at IOSH conference, and that's been great, and it's really good there. My 19-year-old has been running a youth event this week, which I think he didn't realise. I wish he'd seen your talk a couple of weeks ago, Richard, because he suddenly realised at 10 to 7 on uh, Monday that actually he needed that backroom support. So, <laughs> so for, two hours, for two hours every night this week, my husband and I are sitting there working on MailChimp, Slido, and Zoom. We have to arrange the breakout rooms in age groups, we don't know who's going to be there in advance, so we can't preordain those. So we're trying to. So there's all. But anyway, they're using Slido. So in their breakout rooms, they they discuss the topic. They put the questions on Slido. Everybody can then vote up everybody else's questions. Then they have some external visitors in as a panel, and then they can uh, they can run that question and answer session using Slido. So that's. That's the kind Slido, of Slido is a wonderful, is, I absolutely agree. Although I've, today I've tried to give people some quick wins and I do think, please, for those of you on the call, if you're going to use Slido, practice, 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 oh, yeah. because it is actually quite advanced as a tool. And, yeah. and I think if we're, if we're still in this learning curve, then we could have, could have problems, but I absolutely agree. And by the way, can you ever tell a 19 year old what to do until they ask you? There's, the answer is no. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, so Richard, Natasha, um, if Natasha's on the line. Hi, Natasha. <laughs> Natasha's one of our new regulars and another Irish councillor. Um, you said you created an app around um, it. Yeah. Yes, I, it's not necessarily, well, kind of linked to learning. Every year we have an annual EHSQ conference, although this year we haven't. Um, and we held it at Drayton Manor one year. Mm. Um, so everyone was a, we had a team building exercise when you went out into the park and kind of, you know, got to go on all the rides. So we got paid to go on rides. Yeah, it was great. Um, but to manage time and to keep the agenda going, I found an online platform called Nunify, which helped me develop like a social, it was kind of like a social media app, but not. So it like the front page had details of the conference, how to get to the venue, uh, conference rules all those kind of things then there was the social media thing so people out in the park could take pictures and upload them to the to the news feed then we had the actual agenda for the two days um, and it gave you details on what the sessions were about and allowed you to pose anonymous Q&As okay. and then it had a session it had a, another tab that you could do for feedback and polls and things like that and it and it also had a brilliant feature in that whoever was controlling the system from the laptop in the hotel could then send out an alert to everybody on their phones because it was an app that they downloaded on their phone. And it, had a, it, it was a push notification that basically said, session starts in five minutes. Yeah. Please make yeah. your way back to the room. And if, it, it, and if you go to the learning brilliant. and development conferences, they use similar things for yeah. conferencing. It's, so it, I, can we share I, that link? Can, can you send it to me on the chat so that I can share yeah. it? share it for the rest of the group. That would be really yeah. helpful. Well, Thank do. you. Thank Richard, you Richard, there's a couple uh, mentioned hit the mentee in, in place of Slido. Okay. Okay. Other, other tools are available. I suspect we could probably find <laughs> a few more. But it'd be great to produce a as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, what I'll do is I'll com combine all the feedback so that you've got it on my last slide. I won't take credit for that bit, but uh, I'll, I'll make sure that it's added to the links at the end. So um, again, I apologize for rushing, but I'm very conscious that we, we need to just cover off a couple more slides and then hopefully spend more time talking about, uh, about the, uh, about the Q and A's and the chat, chat questions. I, <laughs> You might think this is wholly inappropriate. I know those HR managers up and down the, the country are probably questioning my use of guinea pigs. Um, test, 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 practice, 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 whatever you're doing, find an audience, practice with them, try the software, see that it works, including the webcams, and, uh, and use the guinea pigs. Uh, I know we're not supposed to call them guinea pigs, but uh, you know, have people out there to trial it and test it for you. It's, it's really, really quite important. So here are the links that I promised you from the beginning of the session. Um, um, some of the stuff I haven't mentioned, so very, very briefly, um, there is a, a link there to technology uh, comparisons for the different uh, collaboration tools. Really good website. 
Um, if you are a Zoom user, thoroughly recommend, and you've probably already discovered Raul Montez, who's the product manager for Zoom US. He creates some great webinars. Go on the live ones, they're quite fun. And he makes mistakes because he actually does it from his kitchen live, which is quite, quite interesting. Uh, the best one's an educator's guide to teaching over Zoom. If you haven't seen it, that's a fairly new addition to, uh, to Zoom's list. Um, noise suppression software, didn't talk about it when we we're talking about mics, but certainly if you're into that sort of stuff, worth having a look at. Um, there's also an article on the BBC Click website, which I've put there for you. The work life article, um, which I mentioned, which was really good and certainly worth looking at before you author any content. Uh, there's the link there. Um, and from an IOSH and LinkedIn perspective, uh, Nick Bell, who I've worked with a number of times, has written a few good articles on this subject. He feels very similar to, to Bridget and myself on this, on this issue. Um, and of course, the great article that's just gone out in this. And um, we've had to change, we've had to adapt. So perhaps now is the opportunity to try and be different. Um, and this, this has more resonance now after my session today, I suspect, to experiment and use different and exciting tools and not being afraid of making the odd mistake. So I hope I'm forgiven for my odd mistake today. Thank you very much for your participation. Um, I will pass the questions back over to our, uh, our host, Tony. Uh, I will stay online for the next five or 10 minutes and any questions we don't answer during that session, I'll answer online for you later on. So thank you very much indeed. I'm now gonna stop sharing and hand back over to Tony. Thank you, Tony. So I'm trying to unmute myself.